When I came to the, this garden about uh, 20 years ago, this was a mess, all sorts of uh, plants that nobody had looked after for years. So I decided to make it into a white and green garden because it's the first part of the garden that you see when you arrive usually. And um, white is always a lovely restful color. Here you have two uh, structural plants, uh, Taxus baccata fastidiata, uh, which gives structure all the year round. And we start off uh, in this part of the garden with snowdrops and then um, uh, follow on with the narcissi, narcissi thalia, dying off now but at the very back there. And then those are followed on by um, tobacco plants, Nicotiana, and anemone, honorine, honorine jubeir, and so on. This part of the garden also is edged with box. Um, the box, um, I'm going through my non-straight phase at the moment, so I've clipped the box to these, these um, rounded shapes, and then um, also the box balls are clipped to rounded shapes as well. And um, with them, unfortunately, we have very bad box blight here, so they have to be treated every um, three months against box blight. So this is the woodland garden. And it's by far my favourite part of the garden. It's particularly good in early spring when you have uh, things like um, like uh, Magnolia Galaxy. You have lots of lots of um, Hamamelis and all sorts of wonderful uh, early spring flowering plants. And then so here you have a pond um, which has quite a lot of wildlife in it and lots of fern. Here, this this fern, which actually looks lovely, is called Matuchia strathopteris, uh, and it's the shuttlecock fern. But be warned, it looks lovely, but it can be an absolute thug. So in this part of the garden, when I first came here 20 years ago, it was very flat, and some of it was orchard and grass and things. So I wanted to have a, um, an opportunity to grow woodland plants. So we raised up the borders by using peat blocks, very unfashionable nowadays, and lots of extra soil. So in the center of these borders, they're about uh, two feet higher than uh, the actual path level. So lots of rare and unusual plants here. Um, this form of, of um, Solomon's seal, spotty, spotty dotty here, and um, some really unusual uh, foliage plants. This is pod, pod, podophyllum spotty dotty here, um, which sends out underground runners and appears in other parts of the, the same border. This uh, yellow bract plant here and there, that is Smyrnium perfoliatum, which um, I'm going to have to keep an eye on because it can be a tremendous thug, but it's quite easy if you keep it under control. Here is a small stumpery, badly needing a weed. This stumpery was made from um, stumps that my granddaughter and I collected in a wood, and I use it in the early spring for my collection of snowdrops. Coming round here, you have Magnolia Jane, which is still out, and this lovely tree, this Malus trilobata, which um, in the autumn will have lovely tiny orangey red um, berries on it. Over here, we have a lot of uh, uh, hostas and other um, ground cover plants, but to avoid the slugs, we use something called strouch. This is strouch. It's, um, it's a mixture of a mineral, mineralized straw and um, mulch, and it keeps the slugs at bay. If I was a slug, I would hate to uh, be walking through this. So for me, this is one of the most important areas of the garden, because when people come to see me, they always come up to the front porch, first of all. Um, we had terrible soil here really awful thin sandy soil so about two years ago we removed it um, down to 1.2 meters which took a lot of doing and put in new soil recommended by uh, Troy of Sissinghurst and also by Mottisford and the new soil took uh, two years to settle down to the right level so it was empty for two years but now we have lots of um, roses planted here and various other things so, um, amazingly, the roses are the same colour of pink as the pink as the tulips, which are just about going over. That was a complete accident. And sometimes in life, there are some happy accidents. So um, the roses are um, Rosa uh, Olivia Rose Austin, um, uh, the pink one. And then also a newer addition is Rosa James Austin here, which is a darker, 
darker pink. And um, behind uh, we have this rose here, Rosa Crimson Bengal, which is quite difficult to obtain, um, but you can obtain it from the Chelsea Physic Garden. And uh, it actually flowers for about 11 months of the year. So it's, uh, it's a very, very useful rose to have. This is for um, Euonymus uh, Green Hedger, which I've planted together, four in a clump, to make a, a, a square. So this is the other bit of the front terrace garden. And the designer in me knows that I should repeat what I've done here, over here. However, the plants woman in me says, I want some different plants. So um, a few weeks ago, I took all the all the, um, the plants that I didn't want at all out of here. It took me two half days, big, really hard digging. And then after I'd done that, we spread this mulch on top, which will stop the weeds growing through this year. And in the autumn, we'll, uh, we'll dig it out completely and we'll do the same business with the new soil and we'll plant some more roses and tulips and things like that. Yeah, this tall plant here, this is Euphorbia mellifera, which is a really good tall plant. And Euphorbias do very well in my really thin, sandy soil. Uh, other things here, we've again got the wisteria at the back. <laughs> and in the, in, on the back wall here, you have a mirror. Um, what happened with that was one of the garden writers rang me up and said, you do have ideas for small gardens, don't you? I thought, I don't have any ideas for small gardens. So I rushed out and bought this mirror, painted the, around it the same color of green as the window sills. And a lot of people think that it's a window through into this um, part of the part of the garage. My favorite ferns and all these little aracemas coming through now. Very, very um, uh, attractive small bract coming up from there. And these pots here waiting for normally uh, my delivery of pelargoniums from Woodens of Wenhaston. But this year, what's the point? Because nobody's coming to see the garden. So I'll have to think again. These were two really big box plants, one on either side when I first came here and I couldn't get the wheelbarrow through. So we decided we'd clip them to these, this cloud prune shape. If they were um, to be bought, they would probably be about 6,000 pounds worth each, but you can do them yourself. 